In today's episode, Lisa asks, what tools do you think are missing from most content marketers' tech stacks? Uh, without a doubt, the tool or tools I think are missing the most uh, from our tech stacks as content marketers are what are knowing knowing what content is resonating. The ability to be able to see into individual channel level stuff or uh, by uh, owned media content what is really working. And this is a blind spot that uh, I experienced for myself in my own content and one of the reasons why I end up writing software, writing my own software to fix this is because I couldn't find any vendors that offered uh, this, at least not at a price that I could afford. You know, the, I'm, I'm sure there are some enterprise content management systems that offer it for like $50,000 a month. But as a an individual blogger and as the, uh, the, the part owner, the co-founder of a small business, we don't have that kind of money. Um, Something that would be more like you know a couple hundred bucks a month maybe could afford, but not uh, not not what the enterprise packages charge. So this is something that is a blind spot for content marketers, and it is something that uh, if you had it, it would be great to be able to know what's really working. So let me show you an example. Let's uh, let's bring up the example thing here. The first version of this looks at the pages on site. And one of the critical things that is not in Google Analytics is the ability to see, did a page accelerate somebody's progress towards conversion or did a page not do that? Now, this is predicated, of course, upon you having goals and goal values set up correctly in Google Analytics. If you don't have that set up, it's not going to, you know, this, this sort of technology would not help you at all. So what we see here is, as I go down this list, these are all the pages and then how those pages have helped uh, stimulate conversions. What's important is that this is an attribution model that is um, based on machine learning. So it's not based on last touch or first touch uh, or time decay or any of the, the standard models that are built in. This uses machine learning to essentially look at the, the patterns of conversion and say, how many times did this page show up um, in the first position before conversion, in the second position, in the third position, and so on and so forth, looking back at a, at a person's history and say, look, this page here, how to set your public speaking fee keeps showing up over and over and over and over again uh, within the path to conversion. So we're going to give it the highest rank for uh, the number of conversions that it drives. So this is a, the, one of the most important pieces of content on my website. Uh, then the newsletter, the public speaking page, which I'm super happy about because, hey, if I can get you to, to um, book me as a public speaker, love it. Uh, the home page, of course, how to start your public uh, speaking career. Now, what I do with this information is, based on this report, uh, I'm going to go through and I'm going to update pages. You can see here, this is the 2016 version of this. I just republished that post, um, and already it's starting to creep up in, in terms of uh, conversions it helps to drive. So... If you've got a lot of content on the back end uh, on a, on your site, and, you know, for example, if I scroll down, 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 down to here, you can see you know, there's a whole bunch of pages that aren't helping conversions. So for me, uh, one of the things I would do is obviously help tune up and improve the pages that are driving conversions, and then pick pages that down here that are are you know would be nice to if they did help convert, particularly in the, the 2016, 2017, 2018 period where I know that the content was good and either refresh it or tune it up or things like that. Uh, this is where I, I would also use predictive analytics because if, if there are certain pages that are topically uh, important at certain times of the year, like SEO, like marketing reporting and, thing, and so on and so forth, uh, those would be pages to refresh at specific times to try and get that attention. So that's the first version of this type of report. The second type of report that uh, I would want to see that, again, not you know, a lot of content marketer stacks, is granular level attribution analysis for specific channels. Google Analytics does this out of the box with default channel groupings, but there's a couple problems with that. One, most people's default channel groupings are set up completely wrong. If you go with what's in the box, about half of your social media traffic is misattributed. Uh, your email is going to be all screwed up. Uh, I had to, it, it took me probably the better part of two months to fix and tune up all of all of my default channel groupings. Um, and second, even there, 
even if you've got it all correct, if it says social is the third most important channel for you, well, that's great. Social is a big bucket, right? There's Facebook, there's Twitter, there's LinkedIn, Pinterest, TikTok, uh, YouTube. There's, you pick your, your poison. There's a ton of different things that fall in that bucket of social, and I want more granularity. So this version here, as we can see, pulls out at the individual source medium what's working. So for me, Google organic search, by far the, the, the big driver, followed by my email newsletter. Thank goodness, otherwise I'm like, wow, I've been spending a lot of time on that for no reason. Uh, or an article on Serolytics, uh, Twitter referral traffic from Twitter. And this is important because this is other people's tweets. If you see, my own Twitter is, uh, let's see, da -da -da -da. there it is, Twitter social down here. Right, so my own Twitter activity is not driving a ton of conversion, but other people's tweets are. So that's good to know. Bing organic, hey, that's kind of interesting because a lot of people think of Bing as the redheaded stepchild of, of search engines. But remember that it powers things like some of the smart assistants, some of the assistants on your phone, things like that. Uh, and as a result, it's got some juice. Uh, we have some PRSA stuff. We have a, a bunch of referrals. There's Facebook, other people's posts on Facebook, uh, other people's posts on LinkedIn. So this level of report now helps me understand, okay, where is my content and what's driving stuff to it? So for me, uh, build, continuing, to, continuing to build those relationships on Twitter, it's a good idea. Continuing to do uh, guest post content on certain outlets uh, that, that bring in the juice uh, is a good idea. Other outlets, when you know, one of the things you can do is whenever you get one of those post uh, emails from folks saying like, "Hey, you want to uh, submit a piece of guest content? It'll be great exposure." Cool. Or do you want to do an episode of our podcast? It'll be great exposure. Cool. You do it once, then you run the support and see, eh, is it helping to convert? If the answer is no, then you did the one and that was fine. But you can say to that person again, if, if you, you know, if you're limited on time, as most of us are. Last time we did it, it didn't really drive any results. So maybe there's a different way we can exchange value. But clearly, the exposure that that outlet offers is not not it doesn't have enough uh, juice to to make it worthwhile. So this combination of tools, using machine learning for uh, understanding channels and understanding the pages on your website, are I think critically missing from almost every marketer's tech stack. I know they're missing because I had to write them for myself. Um, Shameless plug, if you're interested in having this run for you, uh, we offer it through Trust Insights. So just go over to trustinsights.ai and fill out the contact form. We'll, we'll, we'll get you hooked up. But by knowing this, I can tune my efforts to what works, to focus on what works, to double down on doing more of what works, um, and tuning up those things that you know I feel like instinctively should work, but the results aren't there yet, at least on my own media. I can use that to experiment and test and build. Great question, Lisa. Uh, look forward to showing off some of this uh, technology at Content Marketing World and other conferences coming up like Macon. Uh, so hopefully we'll see you there. Uh, as always, please uh, leave your comments below in the comments box and subscribe to the YouTube channel and the newsletter. I'll talk to you soon. Want help solving your company's data analytics and digital marketing problems? Visit trustinsights.ai today and let us know how we can help you.